Ed O'Bannon is with us, and wow, what a year. 94 to 95, leading the Bruins to a national championship. And I'm Brian Finley with Fox Sports Radio. Ed, people come up to you, and right away they associate you with that national championship and deserving, as you surely need to be deserving of, a lot of the credit for it. But beyond you, who made that year possible? And the contributions that oftentimes go lesser noticed. Uh, wow. Um, I, I think uh, the coaching staff, it starts with the top for me, um, Coach Herrick. Uh, his vision um, of what he wanted our team to be, uh, how we wanted to, how he wanted us to play, uh, our personnel. The players he recruited, um, his staff, his staff was uh, second to none. You know, uh, Coach Godfrey, Coach Romar, uh, Coach Lavin, uh, even David Boyle, uh, who was our uh, um, was a uh, grad assistant. Um, we had everyone was in place for a reason, and I think we. Um, benefited. We all benefited from Coach Herrick's vision, uh, what he wanted to accomplish. And, um, you know, like I said at the beginning, uh, it, start, it started with him. Um, his assistants worked tirelessly uh, throughout the season. Um, I can't tell you how many hours I put in personally sure. with my coaching staff uh, before and or after practice, um, whether it was, uh, you know, uh, shooting drills with uh, Coach Romar, ball handling with Coach Romar, uh, shooting with Coach Godfrey, shooting with Lav. Um, it was, we constantly worked. Um, and that's just for me. Uh, I, I can't tell you how many hours they put in with everyone else. Um, so, uh, it, it's, it starts with it starts with Coach Herrick, uh, his vision, and and his coaching staff. Why do you think, Ed, that to this day Coach Herrick hasn't gotten the acknowledgement or the recognition he deserves in the grand scheme of college basketball coaches, knowing how much he won and how much he accomplished? I, you know, it's a, it's a great question. I don't know. I don't know why he doesn't get the, the credit he deserves. Um, I, I, I'm sure I'm, I'm probably the wrong person to ask. Um, I, I don't think Coach Herrick got the credit even when he was at UCLA uh, because he always would, would always go to the tournament. Sure. Um, he would always have a winning record. Um, he all, I don't know how many Pac-10, at the time Pac-10, sure. uh, um, championships and titles that he had. Uh, every time I was there, he was always winning. i not not saying because of me, but it, knowing, you know, just uh, my history with him, he always won. Um, I, I think, uh, you know, I remember being, in, when I was in school, um, just watching the national uh, uh, media coverage, mm -hmm. um, they would never give Coach Herrick uh, any credit. Um, I don't know, being in L.A., I don't, you know, Hollywood, sure. uh, that, we would always hear that. Um, you know, we had a lot of guys that went to the beach, from what I hear. <laughs> you know, that's, that's what the national media would say. You know, a bunch of beach bums on our team. So, you know, they they didn't take us serious. And I think, um, again, it starts from the top. Yeah. I don't think Coach Herrick serious. And it just kind of trickled down to, uh, to us. That year, when did you, Ed, personally, realistically think that this team had all the makings of going all the way? Uh, when we were – when we were working out in the uh, in the summer, when our freshmen, our uh, the four kids, uh, they checked in and and uh, they were working out with us, uh, and we were on a track. 
uh, we were in the gym uh, and we were prepping for that run, uh, I could tell that there was a, a sense of uh, seriousness. Um, we all wanted to be on the same page. It wasn't a lot of uh, animosity. Um, there were clicks. You know, there was a freshman click, there was a sophomore click, uh, and then the juniors kind of clicked with us. Uh, I remember Kevin Dempsey uh, was a senior, or a, a junior on the team. Uh, he and I were roommates. Uh, so we hung out a lot. But our, us seniors and juniors hung together. Uh, but the cliques didn't, didn't intervene with being there for each other uh, on the basketball court. Uh, and and I think that helped, you know. Sometimes there are good clicks, yeah. And had those. Uh, again, the freshmen were together, sophomores were together, and uh, juniors and seniors were together. So it was uh, it was a really cool um, dynamic uh, that uh, we had my senior year. And um, uh, you know, everyone worked hard. Um, we had leaders. We had senior leadership, but uh, everyone worked hard and wanted to uh, pull their pull their weight. I could tell just while there are clicks, everybody clicked together. The chemistry, as you were pointing out, was unmatched. And when you all got together on the court, it was no surprise, I would think, to you to see how well you did. But then when you got to the national championship game, and here are all these people saying, Arkansas, this, they're all, oh, they're so good. You knew, your team knew how good you were. What was it like, even all the way up to the national championship game, being overlooked by the national media, like you had all season long, and once again, proving people wrong? Well, it was expected. You know, um, I know as, as long as I had been there, we had always really kind of underachieved. Uh, we always were expected to do very well, specifically when it came to the, the postseason tournament. And so uh, I think, and then my junior year, because we lost so bad, uh, so badly in the, in the first round um, by losing, you know, about 30 points or whatever it was, uh, I think just the national media basically kind of had enough of us. And so this is a team that, you know, they, they do great during the season. We were ranked number one at some point during my junior year. Uh, and then and just really just kind of fell off. So I think the national media really kind of had enough of us uh, and said, look, they're just going to fall off anyway. So why, uh, why should we think that this year is going to be any different? And so I, I think... Uh, going into that national championship game and even just the, the, the tournament, mm -hmm. we had uh, a different outlook, uh, a different view uh, of ourselves. We knew who we were. I, I think previous years we were searching for an identity mm -hmm. uh, and never, never found it. Um, we felt accomplished. My, and I'm going back a little bit. Yeah. My, year we felt accomplished once we became the number one team in the country we almost felt like we had arrived uh and then right when that happened we just nosedived uh and so uh this time we had uh we had goals you know and and going to the national championship uh was one was uh, was a goal but it wasn't the finished product we wanted to win we believed that we could win. I think when J.R. Henderson made those two free throws at the end of the game against Kentucky um, in our like second game or third game of the season, um, gave us confidence that we could actually play on a national level in front of a national, national audience uh, and be successful. Um, that gave us an identity, you know, that gave the freshmen um, confidence that they could compete at that level. Uh, it gave us uh, confidence that we could compete at that level. Uh, but then at the same time, we weren't satisfied. Yeah. And we, we had it written up on our, on our wall, you know, in, in, the, in the locker room. We are going to win the national championship. 
it's not enough getting to the final four or even playing in that game. Our goal was to win it. So, um, yeah, we used the national media as uh, motivation, but um, it wasn't our it wasn't our backbone. Our backbone was was us as a team, as a coaching staff, uh, as a unit. Speaking of ways in which you use motivation, does your team in 95 win the national championship without the heartbreak in 94 and getting bounced early in the NCAA tournament? Uh, well, yes, we used it. Absolutely. I know I did. Uh, I know I was um, heartbroken. Um, at the way that we played uh, and our attitude um, uh, before that game and during that game. So um, I personally vowed that we would never do that again. That was never going to happen to us again. As long as I had uh, say so at, at the final outcome of a match, um, we would never play that bad again. We would never be embarrassed like that again. And so uh, that was absolute motivation, um, especially during the preparation leading into uh, the season. Um, you know, the off season was huge for us mm-hmm. uh, because we were, we were getting ready. We were preparing for the 95 season while the, previous postseason was still playing, was playing out. We were, I mean, right away, we went right back to the gym, right back to the track, right back to the weight room, and we started preparing before Arkansas beat Duke in the previous season. So while everybody was playing out their season, we were preparing for the next season. That was, um, that's how motivated we were. And that's, you know, that's what uh, I think uh, got us through the the, the, the longevity of the, of the season, the 95 season, was the fact that we we were just so focused and so uh, determined to uh, to win. And we, we, at all costs. You pointed to the free throws made early that season by J.R. Henderson. There are a lot of plays that people instantly associate you with from the common UCLA fan. Oh, Ed did this, Ed did that. But what is something that you did that you felt was so important to the success of that year, whether it was a play or something you did in a specific game that you felt was super important that people don't bring up, that doesn't get the recognition it deserves, that you felt like, man, I did something so well and people associate you with this other game or this other play or something else you did. (laughs) <laughs> well, uh, one, one play comes to mind. Um, it was in the Missouri game. At the end of the game, um, my man went back door on me, caught the pass and made the layup for them to go up 73, 72. And then we called a timeout with 4.8 seconds left. So if I had actually played defense correctly, I would have stole that pass and Tyus wouldn't have even made the shot. Who knows how we would have finished off that season. So because of my lack of defense, Tyus got that opportunity to get the ball in bounds, yeah. go down um, because we were down and, and score. You know, if I had stole the ball, then he wouldn't have had that opportunity. So I think because of my miscalculation on the play, I stepped in to help, whereas I should have stayed home. I would have wow. made it. So I, I, I mean, that's, you know. That's, that's a fascinating that's, perspective, but it's so true. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. My man scored. So um, I, 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 I want to say I kicked myself for that, but it wouldn't have given Tyus that opportunity uh, to be our hero. Um, And then who knows how we would have played after that, you know? Maybe we get fat, uh, thinking that we can 
um, run through the you know the the tournament. Who you know who knows? So uh, I you know I don't know. Is there a certain play that I that I made? I, I don't I don't know. I don't know how many plays I made that uh, helped us win. Um, I don't know um, if there is one play in particular. Um, I remember getting an offensive rebound in the championship game um, and then uh, getting an and one. Uh, and this, it was kind of the start of the second half. Uh, Charles went up, missed the layup, I think. Um, he had gotten fouled, um, wasn't called. I got the rebound, uh, went up, got the and one, which was, you know, it was called. Sure. Uh, and we were fired up. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we had kind of ran out to uh, the three-point line, and I grabbed a hold of Cameron Dollar, and we were <laughs> hugging, and George came up behind me, and Charles came, and we were all, Toby, we all were in the middle of the court hugging each other, and, um, you know, that was, that was a big moment for us, and that was a big moment for me. Uh, I also remember Dollar telling me after we had finished hugging and I was getting ready to shoot my free throws, he looks at me, he's like, calm down, <laughs> make your free throw. You know, that's what, breathe. He kept telling me, breathe. So, um, I, you know, there was, there was uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, things. I remember um, getting on Toby one time uh, early in the season. Um, Coach Lab had this, uh, had this saying, uh, no dunks, no layups. Um, it was even, he made t-shirts uh, saying that as well. And I remember, um, you know, just following Toby a couple times during practice. He, he getting mad at me and I'm like, don't get mad at me. Get mad at the next guy. Do that to the guys that we play against. That's sort of thing. And in the championship game, he hit Corliss like that. Uh, Corliss went up for a shot. Corliss Williamson went up for a shot. And Toby knocked him to the ground. And then kind of stood up over him a little bit uh, <laughs> and flexed a little, you know, and I, I pull him away like, hey, don't mess with him. Um, but in the back, you know, in my gut, I was, I was, I was, I was pleased, you know, <laughs> it's a 18 year old, 17, 18 year old kid. Um, it took him the last, it didn't take him that long, but in the last game, he actually did what we had planned for him to do, you know, and, and that's, no dunks, no layups. And uh, so every, we just all just, you know, it, it all just kind of started to come together and, and came, to fru came to fruition yeah. uh, in the final game. What's one question from the 95 title run you've never been asked and that you've been dying to answer? You probably get a whole lot of common questions about, Hey, what was it like that game? Or how did you do it? How did you score 30 and 17? But what's a, a part of that story run that you've wanted to talk about or you've wanted somebody to bring up, but none in the media or anybody that have come across you in everyday life have thought about asking that question, but means a lot to the success of that team in that year. Man, that's a great question. Um, I don't. Uh, I've gotten a lot of questions, a million questions about that, about that game and about that team. Um, yeah, what's one where you haven't gotten? Because I can't even imagine how many times you've been asked the same questions over and over again about that team, about why it worked, how did you do it, the the four point eight against Missouri. But what's something about this team that you've wanted to talk about and you've wanted to answer, but nobody's asked you that question before? But it means so much about describing the fabric of the team. You know, I, I, don't, I don't know. Um, I can't think of a specific question. Sure. Uh, I, I do know that um, I'm proud of my team. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, there have been national champions where they have, you know, one great player that just kind of led them to the promised, promised land, that sort of thing. 
uh, or two great players. Um, but we had a lot. Uh, I mean, top to bottom, you know. Um, our coaching staff, like I said, were just uh, fantastic. They were phenomenal, you know. Uh, our preparation, um, I, you know, we didn't even practice the day before the national championship game. Really? Whoa. Yeah, we didn't. Even, we didn't have a. Uh, we didn't have a practice. We uh, and I don't know if it was because Ty has hurt his wrist and we didn't want to go to the gym. Um, I know Coach gave us time off throughout the season, mm -hmm. so this wasn't something that just kind of happened, you know. Um, throughout the season, he would, well, you know, my knee was in bad shape, um, so he would give me days off um, throughout the season. We went through a five-game stretch in about like I don't know eight days or something like that. Um, with some travel involved as well. And so he, he recognized that. He didn't beat us into the ground and gave us rest. Um, we were the, the best conditioned team, we thought, in the country. Um, we just worked hard. Yeah. Uh, um, we felt like we worked harder than everybody. everybody. Um, we were constantly, you know, constantly running. Um, I remember the beginning of the season, like I said, we were, we were working out before anybody else was, you know, and um, I, I, I think it, it I, while I understand why people didn't have us winning the championship, um, it still uh, struck a nerve that, because we were number one team in the country going in, um, you know, uh, from, from our, 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 from the, our region as well as the country. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, and so for us, there was just no doubt. Like, how do you not pick us? Yeah. Uh, so um, I, that struck a nerve. Um, but it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, the final thing. It wasn't, uh, I, I don't know. Let's see. Uh oh. Oh, there you go. Oh, you're good. Okay, cool. You're there. Awesome. Got a phone call. Um, I'll edit that out. No, you're good. You're good. Um, what was I going to say? The, oh, yeah. I saw Ed, the team got together on a Zoom call, that 95 championship yes. team, all the assistants, all the players. Who did the most laughing during that call? Oh, <laughs> uh, wow. Um, we all had really good laughs. Um, Coach Romar and uh, Ike Nwankwo were probably the funniest guys on the okay. team. Um, we all laughed at Ike all the time. <laughs> Ike was a bit of a... Uh, punching dummy for <laughs> uh but he always took it in good stride great person that great you know uh just a really good dude cool cat yeah um didn't mind us talking about him and yeah. laughing at him. uh super intelligent person um he laughed a lot <laughs> we all had really good really good laughs um coach Herrick, told great stories and laugh and we laughed and you know um it was it was uh it was a great conversation um it lasted shoot two three hours i i wow or we were I, I remember going to bed it had to be after midnight wow we were we were on the phone for a long time uh and then i couldn't sleep too much after that just thinking about wow. uh, my guys you know my brothers and uh, so that was, um, that was a tremendous, that was a great experience. I, um, you know, we hadn't been together in a long time, all of us. Uh, and so the fact that, uh, you know, even George, who's way across the country uh, in Prague, 
uh, you know, um, I mean, it was, it was such a, uh, such a thrill. Um, but we all had, I mean, belly laughs, like we were. For sure. Yeah. You know, it was, it was a great, it was a great conversation. Loved it. The, I can feel your nostalgia going back to that, that zoom call and the emotion that you felt just, you know, talking with those guys and rehashing the old moments and the emotion you felt when you won the national championship game and you were cutting down the net and the win itself was something to be ecstatic about but beyond just the win why was that moment being on the court and winning it all why was it even more fulfilling or how was it more fulfilling to you based upon all the trials and tribulations that it took to get there? Well, I think half of it was relief. I think, um, yeah, I think, I think, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was a goal. Um, um, I, a dream come true to actually have that experience with my brother. Um, you know, my brother, he and I shared a room as kids growing up. Um, I remember not being able to leave the house unless I took my brother with me. Um, and I couldn't play unless he was on my team. Uh, all my, and all my friends knew it. So uh, they would pick me and then would pick my brother. If I was a team captain, I'd pick him. I don't care who was out there. Magic could have been playing. I couldn't play unless my brother was on my team, so I would pick him. So to have that history with him uh, and then being on the court winning a national championship um, with him uh, was a dream come true for my parents as well, for sure. Specifically my dad, because he's the one that laid down that rule that I couldn't leave the house without my brother. So that had to be uh, a terrific thrill for him. Um, so there was a number of uh, uh, emotions that I felt during that game. Uh, I remember uh, crying um, after that game. I think that was the, the relief coming out. Uh, yeah. It was a long, long, hard road. I tore my knee up again five years prior, four years prior. Uh, and really just wanted to uh, get back to any kind of national prominent with my guys. And um, so we did that. And so, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a great experience, but it was, a lot of it was, was, um, was relief that it was, we accomplished our goal. I did it with my brother. And, uh, and it was, um, it was a culmination of a lot of hard work, blood, blood, literal blood, sweat, and tears going into that. Yep. Well, what was the first thing that John Wooden said to you after you took home the title? Uh, not a whole lot. Just congratulations. Uh, he was, he was happy for us, uh, ecstatic. Coach Wooden didn't come around too much. He was at all home games. Um, I would I would walk by. He wouldn't he wouldn't come around the team too much. He was always hanging out with Coach Harris. Yeah. Uh, sometimes after class, I'd be walking by the uh, coach coach's office, uh, and Coach wouldn't be sitting on the couch. You know, his legs crossed and his arms up on the couch, and they would just be sitting there talking and laughing. And I would just walk through, say hello to Coach, uh, and and keep moving. Um, always um, just a beautiful man. Uh, always had a smile on his face, um, uh, but he 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 made it a point to stay away and let us have our moment, if you will. Yeah. Uh, much as we wanted to share it with him, because he created this mm -hmm. unbelievable tradition, you know, and we were just kind of building on his the tradition that he made that he built. Um, but he he stayed in the background, so I didn't really see him too much after we won. It was 
really just kind of a quick hello. In fact, I think he even left earlier after before the game ended just to so he wouldn't be the center of attention, that sort of thing. So uh, Coach Wooden, uh, again, like I said, was a beautiful man. Uh, I loved my time with him. Um, always treated my family um, with just respect and just uh, love, you know, uh, even though I, I didn't play for him. Um, I always, I used to tell Coach Eric, if, if I wasn't going to play for you, it would have been, I would have loved to play for Coach, Coach Wooden, you know, so, um, but, uh, you know, he just, uh, just a quick congratulations and, a, you know, a little hug, whatever, and that was, that was pretty much it. Ed, my last question for you, and seeing how Coach Wooden had a keen eye on watching future UCLA programs from afar, and then thinking about you, and you are out of state, and you're keeping a close eye on what's going on with the current status of UCLA basketball, and I guess how closely do you with your busy schedule, are you able to kind of keep tabs on what Mick Cronin is doing and their new athletic director and Martin Jarman? Um, I, you know, uh, not as, not as much as I would like. Um, I think, uh, because of my schedule, uh, and then, uh, with, uh, everything that's kind of going on in, in the world, um, it's been, it's been a little hard. Yeah, uh, I I did watch a few games last year. Uh, I I thought coach, especially towards the end of the season, halfway through, uh, towards the end, uh, got the guys playing a lot better, uh, and they seem to be on the upswing and and really just uh, playing harder and playing a, a lot more together. Uh, I, he and I met for the first time uh, at the game out here when they played against North Carolina. Oh last wow. Yeah, so that was cool. Um, I haven't met our athletic director yet, um, but I, you know, I'd like to for sure. Yeah. Uh, but um, you know, I think UCLA basketball is headed in the right direction. Mm. Um, again, I, I I'm not going to act like I've been keeping close tabs, mm. um, but I I did see an upswing in the season last year. Absolutely. And. Um, you know, hopefully uh, we will continue to improve. Well, Ed, I am, I, I can't tell you how grateful I am f for, for some storytelling with you. This was, this was really special. I, I really enjoyed just how, you know, emotional you were and open about, you know, what you went through and just that road that you were able to pave and being such a important part of college basketball lore and, I just commend you for everything you've done on the court, off the court, in the past, now. And I just want to say how much I appreciate you coming on and, and giving a couple minutes of your time on, on a day off of work. You've got 100,000 <laughs> things more important to do than this. But I, I, I just, just, just understand how much I appreciate you. No worries. It's my pleasure, Brian. I, I appreciate you, uh, your patience. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> And um, it has been uh, an honor and a pleasure to be on your show.